Hallelujah. Father, we ask now that you would anoint your word, speak to us, in us, and through us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We are literally people of the book. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. We are people of the word. The word distinguishes us. The word separates us yes. from the world. The word makes you different from the world. From the world. It does. It does. We're people of the book. God's book. Jews are people of the Torah. We're part, we got Torah, but we got some addition, and that's called the New Testament. We are people of the book. That's who we are. Thank you, Lord. Now, the book will make you different if you really get into it. And really dig in there. And when you dig, you will find the treasures. You will find the treasures. My father used to say to me, diamonds do not lie on the surface of the earth. You gotta dig for them. You gotta work for them. And so, and you get into the book, God teaches you about yourself and about the body, all kinds of things, the things that you need. The truth is, if you only have one book, you have to have the Bible. Yes. That's it. You don't need any other book other than the Bible. That's all you need. The Bible actually has all the answers to every need that you have. It may not answer the question the way you want it answered, but it has the answer to every question that you have. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. It does. It really does. And so, as you discover this in your life, and you discover to mix the word with faith, and to mix the word with the spirit, God does amazing things. Amazing things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes the requests that we have take a long time for God to answer. How many of you know that? Right. But as you keep believing and praising Him for it, you'll receive it. Believe and receive. And we thank God for that. There's a time for everything to be answered, too. Solomon talked about that. But in God's, God's economy, there's a time for everything to happen. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. So don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Um, God is doing great things, great things in our lives and in the life of this assembly and in people's lives. I see it every day, every week. I see it. I hear it. I'm aware of it. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going back to Psalm 119 today. Now, Psalm 119 is beautiful because it talks about the Word the Word of God. It uses 10 different words for the Word, the law of God, the promises of God, okay? All kinds of things. And it all means the same thing, the Word of God. 10 different words. And the writer wrote this as what we call an acrostic. I don't wanna get you mixed up on 50 cent words but it's an acrostic, and it's according to the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet. We're gonna look at the first three letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, okay? That's number, that's A. And we're gonna go down to Gimel, that's C. And there's eight verses in each of these letters. Eight verses. And the writer had it all together. And if you could see it in Hebrew, each of the stanzas started with that letter. Each one. Hallelujah. So it was made, it was really made in Hebrew to help you memorize it, to get it inside of yourself. So God's word is there for you to take and deposit it inside of you. Deposit God's word. Feed on his word. Think about his word. Meditate on his word. Yes. Amen. Psalm 1. In the law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Yes. 
and he'll bring forth his fruit in his season. Everything is seasonal. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Sometimes your season's not somebody else's season. That's true. But there's a season for everybody. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. So we're gonna we're gonna start and go through this a little bit here for the first three groups. And God's gonna work with us. I'm gonna jump around a little bit. But thank you, Jesus. We're gonna have a good time. Amen. Psalm 119. How blessed or blessed are those whose way is blameless. Now he makes a statement. He's saying, how blessed are the people that don't live in sin and don't commit sin. And what he's saying is, I have noticed as I've watched life that the people that don't commit sin are blessed. I'm going to turn it around. That's what he's saying. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's true. Here we go. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, that's the first little clue he lets out. To be blessed, you gotta walk in the law of the Lord. You gotta walk in the word of God. You gotta think about the word. You gotta operate in the word. That's gotta be inside of you all the time. Yes. That's, that's the blessing right there. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. Here's another little secret right there. She starts off in verse one by saying, if you're in the word, you will be blessed. You can't help but be blessed. You have to be blessed. There's no other way. God is not gonna bypass his word. He's not gonna do it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He's gonna fulfill his word, all right. So verse number two says, you're blessed if you observe the testimonies, or if you blessed if you seek him with all your heart. And that's another secret. When you seek God, seek him with all your heart, meaning nothing can be in front of God. Nothing can be more important than God. Now, for busy people, or for people that have a lot of responsibility, that's tough. Because you're focused on a lot of things. Your kids, your home, your work, your job. Am I getting pushed ahead? Am I getting promoted? I talked with some people the other day. I'm out of here. They're not going to talk to some family members, you know. They, they didn't promote me. I'm not going to get treated right. Finally, I said to this person, Do you have a job? Yeah, you know, be happy about it. Yes, right. Be thankful for it. That's right. You know, in time, they'll see your value. They'll see who you are. Yeah. They'll see your value. God will make them see your value. Yes. Say hallelujah. Yes. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. But it's the word. That's right. It's the word. So we live and operate and have our whole being in the word of God. Right. Everything we do has to do with the word. Yes. Amen. And when you get to that stage, you have to be blessed in all aspects of your life. Right. Does that mean you won't be challenged? You won't have problems? No. The devil's going to see to that. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. But you're going to overcome. Yes. Say thank you, Jesus. When you walk in the Word, you will overcome every time. Come on, wave your hand. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So the Word makes you different. The Word separates you. I used to talk to some young people years ago, and I used to say, you know, you can't do this or do that. What do you mean? Uh, everybody else. I said, that's for everybody else. That's not for you. That's not for you. You can't do that. Why? Because of the word. Because the word. The word separates. Say hello. Amen. Amen. The word. The word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The word will separate you. Now, you have to allow the word to separate you too. The Word, through the Holy Spirit, God puts a mark on you. Okay? If you're in the cattle business, everybody has a brand. And, and really today, almost any business of any size has a brand. And when you look at that brand, you know what it means. You know what the, what the story is. God puts a brand on you. And the brand really comes through the Word. Say hallelujah. Through the Word of God. A 
as you get into the Word, you will identify with God more and more and more. I want to be like everybody else. You can't be. You can't be. Because of, because of the book. The book puts a brand on you. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Back to the book. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. <clears throat> Three. They also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. Now, let me explain that. He's not saying that they are sinless. He didn't say that. He's saying they don't live unrighteous lives. If they make a mistake and something happens, they get right back on track. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. They're not, they're not sinless. They're not. We're not sinless. But when we make a mistake, Holy Spirit corrects us. We get back in line. Hallelujah. And we line up with the word. Glory to God. Amen. So all of these are the writer of this song. These are his observations. He's saying, I notice that God's people get blessed. Yeah, they do. God takes care of them. They get saved, they get healed, they get sanctified, they get changed, they come out of the world. God blesses them in their occupations, in their business. He blesses them wherever they go. He blesses them. Why? Because the book promises that. Say hallelujah. All right, back to the book. <clears throat> They also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. That's three. Four. You have ordained your precepts that we should keep them diligently. Now, ordained means to set aside. When we lay hands on people and we ordain them into the ministry, we set them aside for the ministry that God has called them to do. And God has a purpose and a plan for this book that you have in front of you, for this Bible. He's got a purpose and a plan for this book. He has ordained this book to help separate us from the world, to make a difference in our lives, hallelujah. Also, the word creates faith. <clears throat> the word creates faith in your heart. When you read the word, all of a sudden you believe you can do it. We can see it happen. So, the word is there, and it's ordained. In other words, it has a specific purpose. Every person sitting in this room today has a specific purpose in God. A specific purpose. Everybody. Your name, God knows exactly who you are. He knows what you're called to do. There's a book. With your name written on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a book. And I'm not talking about the book of life either. I'm talking about your own book. And you know who fills them out? The angels. They are God's accountants. They keep everything down. There's a book, and in this book, He has a plan for you. And in that book, it talks all what He wants to happen in your life. He's got a big plan for you. Say thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah told Israel, I have plans for you. God has plans for everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Sounds fantastic. It is fantastic, but God is fantastic. He's got a book written with your name. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. All right. Glory to God. All right. Back to the Word. You have ordained your precepts. God has ordained His precepts. That's His Word. That we should keep them, His laws. That we should keep them diligently. Not haphazardly, not sloppily, diligently. Keep the word of God diligently. Amen. And God looks at our He's constantly examining our hearts to see where it's at on any given situation. All the time, He's weighing us. Do you ever notice that? Yes. I'm being weighed all the time. I know that. I'm being weighed, weighed, weighed. He's testing, testing, testing all the time. Life is a huge test. Amen. To see if I really want to line up with God's that's word. Right. Yes, that's right. And you have to ask God. Sometimes you really don't want to line up with his word. You have to ask God, Lord, give me the right heart to line up with your word. Yes. 
I want to line up with your word. I want to do your word. I want to be happy about your word. I want to live in your word. I want to walk in your word. I want to speak your word. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I want to do it. And as you seek God and you seek the word, because the word of God is the will of God. Amen. I want to know what God's will is. It's in the word. God's will is in the word. It's there, right there. That's what it is. Thank God he didn't leave us clueless in Seattle. Say hallelujah. Not since that asleep was clueless. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He gave us a book. Hallelujah. And so we become people of the book. Hallelujah. Don't ever be ashamed of the book. Amen. Years ago, my father did a missionary trip to Russia back in the 90s when Russia opened up. And they had great meetings. They had tremendous meetings there. And one of the things that brought the crowds out was they gave everybody a New Testament. They were hungry for the Word. They had been separated from the Word their whole life. They wanted the Word. And so every night they give out several hundred, maybe eight or nine hundred New Testaments. And one, one night, this lady came and said, that's not the whole book. She said, I saw one one day, and that's not it. <laughs> that was just the New Testament. I want the whole book. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next night, she got a whole book. She got the whole, the whole sandwich, the whole enchilada. She got it all. Thank you, Jesus. To the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want the whole book. Now, she didn't know anything about the book other than the fact she wanted it. And she knew it was bigger than the one they were giving her. There was more to it. So all she knew. She says, I once saw one one time. Last thing, I once saw a complete Bible. And I want it. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And guess what? God gave it to us. Say hallelujah. <laughs> a whole book. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, just to show you how important the book is in our civilization, right down here on Broadway, there's a congregational church by the graveyard. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Right down there. It's a very old church from the 1600s. Okay? They have people that have gone astray. Their leadership is not godly. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, they fly a multicolored flag out in front of the church. Okay? When this, when this area was settled by the settlers in the 1600s, the only thing they wanted to do was teach their children the Bible. That's all they wanted to do. And you know what they did? They taught their children Greek and Hebrew. Imagine that. They taught their children to read Greek, to read the New Testament, and Hebrew to read the Old Testament. They didn't have to. They could have taught them ABCs, CFDs, everything else. Read and write and arithmetic. They did. They taught them the Word. Right? That's just what started right here. You'll never hear that in history anymore. You won't hear it. But I'm telling you, Education started with the book. Say hallelujah. Yes. Education started with the book. Yes. Harvard was a seminary for preachers. Right. Yeah. Yale was a seminary for preachers. And all started with the book. Yeah. All basic education starts with the word of God. Yes. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's the founding principle of everything. The Word! The Word! The Word! And now we have ignoramuses that don't want to go near the Word. You got to be careful what they say. They want to cut the Word out. You can't cut the Word out and not pay a price. They're going to pay a price for the price. For ignoring the truth of the book. You can't. Thank you, Jesus. So, 
everything in this whole area, New England, all of the, the whole eastern seaboard, uh, this country all started in and around the world. Were we perfect? No, we weren't. Did they treat people wrong? Yes, they did. But they still started with the word. Say hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And the word will change your life if you pay attention to it. Hallelujah. That's right. If you pay attention, it'll change your life. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Wave your hands. This whole area here originally was saturated with the word of God. When I found that out about early education, teaching their children Hebrew and Greek, I was flabbergasted. I was shocked. If you know anything about languages, the earlier a child gets into it, the easier it is for them. I had a tough time with languages. That's not my, my gifting. <laughs> I had a tough time with that. But when you teach it to a child, they pick up on it right away. Right away. And so these children, of course, they knew English because they spoke English, but they read Greek and they read Hebrew. That was their education. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good. That is the foundation of this nation. Don't let anybody ever change you or change your thought or tell you something different. That is how it came into being. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Back to the book. All right. <clears throat> oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes. Now, he prays a prayer of petition here. He's not just stating a fact or talking to God. He's saying, God, establish my ways. And what he's saying is, after I noticed that everybody who lived according to the book was blessed, then I discovered that I wasn't really, really living according to the book. That happens to everybody. Come on, let's be honest. That happens to all of us. The Spirit of God will lead you and guide you and show you made a little mistake here, a little mistake there, a little mistake. You've got to be willing to receive the correction. You've got to be willing to receive the correction. Once you're willing to receive it, God can promote you. God can push you along. Thank you, Lord. And so he says to God, oh, that I would diligently seek you. I want to seek you. Would you got to help me? That's good. That's a good prayer. You've got to ask God to help us. Because a lot of times, we don't want to get down on our knees and pray. Sometimes we don't feel like it. Let's be honest. Come on. That's right. That's right. Sometimes we don't feel like praying. We gotta take ourselves by the back of the neck and say, you're praying. Get on your knees. Come on. We're gonna serve God around here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Once you do that, then your heart begins to change. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's it. Hallelujah. Your heart will change and you'll want to do it. You'll want to do it. But sometimes we have to push the flesh. It's always the flesh that's in the way. The flesh doesn't want to do it. Doesn't want to come under authority. Okay. Back to the book. <clears throat> All that my way, verse 5, may be established. You want to be established in God? Then you have to keep a statue. Six. When I keep your statutes, I'm falling from the verse five, then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. He says something good here, he says, I open the book and sometimes I get embarrassed because I haven't done what I should be doing. Guess what, that's what the book's all about. The book is there to bring correction in our life. It's there to bring faith. It's there to build us up. It's there to bring correction to it. It's there to correct us. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Seven. I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. He was saying, 
when I really learn the Word of God, I can really please God. Yes. That's what he's saying. That's true. Yeah. When you really know the Word, you can really please God. Say hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, essentially, he's saying, I want to please you. you got to help me. That's what he's saying. But he's also saying, well, you've got to help me learn these words. You've got to help me hide them in my heart. <clears throat> Eight, I shall keep your statutes. Do not forsake me utterly. He's making a promise to God. God, I'll live by the book. Just don't forsake me. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. David said, don't take your spirit away from me. I can't make it without the Holy Spirit. You can't. You try to make five minutes without the Holy Spirit, you're going to be in trouble. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how old you are, but if you're young, get the word in there quick and it'll hold you secure. Say hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It'll hold you tight. How can a young man keep his way pure? How? Uh, by keeping it according to your word. Ten. With all my heart, I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. He realizes, honestly, that even though you seek God with all your heart, you can still make a mistake. Even though you seek God with everything that's in you, you can still go astray. Don't let me wander. Keep me on the straight and narrow. Say hallelujah. So you're saying, Lord, I don't mind you correcting me. Correct me. Just keep me where I belong. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because it's easy to go astray. It's easy to go left, right, or slow down, or speed up, whatever. But we want to go just the way God wants us to go. Keep me in your path. Say hallelujah. Amen. So there are times in your life where you've got to pray this prayer. Lord, keep me. Keep me on the straight and narrow. Keep me from going the wrong direction. Keep me from thinking the wrong thoughts. Keep me from being affected by the world's thinking. Everything is right. Whatever I do is right. Keep me from thinking crazy thoughts. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch over me. Amen. And he does. But in order to fulfill that, let us stay in the book. In the book. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So you see the heart of the writer here. You see his heart. He's seeking God with all of his heart. He realizes that he's weak. We all realize we're weak. We all realize we're weak. We all realize we need help. Because we are. We're flesh. We have to have help. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for that. God gives us help. We need it. We say we have to say it, though. If you don't want to admit it, you can't receive it. All right. Back to the book. Glory to God. With all my heart, one more time, verse 10, I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Now, that's why there's always a shepherd around when you have a herd of sheep. Because they tend to wander. They'll wander around. Amen. I'll never forget <laughs> Betty Hinn was preaching one time with his accent. I'm going to hold Betty Hinn. He has a Middle East accent. And he said, There's too many pastors following the herd. He said, You don't follow the herd because if you follow the herd, you're going to walk in doo doo. <laughs> he said, You have to walk in front of the, the, the flock. You have to walk in front of the flock. You have to lead the flock. Amen. Yes. That's right. He said, you'll step in doo-doo. <laughs> That's true, too. Very true. All right. Back to the book. Eleven. Your word I have hid or treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. 
Your word have I treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. That's the main reason why we hide the word in our heart, and why we memorize the scripture, so that we won't sin against God. That's true. That's right. This is why we do it. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Now you see the, the writer is really reaching out towards God. He said, you're blessed. You're blessed forever. But teach me your statutes. These are verses that you need, that everybody needs to pray. We need to pray these. Because once you get a hold of the word, you can do anything. You can believe anything. Say hallelujah. Satan can't whip you over the head all the time. Teach me your statutes. 13. With my lips, I have I speak of what I have told of all the ordinances of your mouth. In other words, I speak about God's word. Whenever Christians get together, inevitably the conversation will get around the word. Yes, we'll talk about yes, the word. Right. If you're with your friends and they're Christians, you'll talk about the word. The word, the word, the word. Yes. Amen. 14, I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I have rejoiced in your testimonies as much as in all riches. You don't have to buy a lottery ticket. You just open the book. That's all you gotta do. You might hit on the lottery, you might hit, and everybody jumps and screams and hollers. But it won't make a big of difference in your life. This book will. Say hallelujah. This book will. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody once came and gave me a lottery ticket a few years ago and said, I pray over this. This is for the church. I said, All right. Of course, it didn't, it was, it didn't hit. But uh, uh, if it did, I would have said, thank, thank you, Jesus. But I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't really looking for it. God knows what we need to. He knows who we are and what we need. Thank you, Jesus. You really want your life to be changed? Get in the book. Get in the word. Hide the word in your heart. Soak yourself in the book. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's a proven fact that people who win a million dollars or more in the lottery end up broke most of the time. They end up in bankruptcy. They don't know what to do with it. The book will tell you how to handle it and what to do with it. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The answer is not piles of money. The answer is the book. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not. Thank you, Jesus. It's not. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. God is so good. Hallelujah. Amen. So, back to the book. We're almost done here today. We've been done just a little bit earlier. We're going to come, come to the front. We're going to have some prayer. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> 15. I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. This really goes back to Psalm 1, verse 2. Okay. And regard your ways. Notice, I'll meditate on your precepts, but I'll also regard your ways, meaning I'll do your word. I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. Thank you. Hallelujah. I will not forget the word of God. Amen. This word is everything. Yes. It's not something, it's everything. Yeah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, take your Bible. And we're going to stand there. We're going to wrap our, we're going to hug the Bible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hug this book. Hug it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep it close to you. All the time. Keep it close to you. Hallelujah. Hug this book. This book makes the difference in your life. 
This is what God gave us. Hallelujah. The Jews have a feast called Simchus Torah, which is the feast of the word. It's when God gave Moses the commandments. And they have a little celebration in the synagogues and the kids walk around. But they hug the word, they want them. And then the elders hold up the scroll, the Torah, and people come down and kiss it. They kiss the book. They kiss it. That's right. Yes, Lord. Amen. The book of Psalms says, kiss the sun. It says kiss the sun. The book is the sun. Say hallelujah. Right now, this is what we have. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Lest God will be angry with you if you don't kiss the sun. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just hold this book in high esteem in our lives. We thank you that we're going to live with this. We do every day, but you're going to install, instill a deep desire to operate in and around the book. Hallelujah. Everything we do has to be in the book and of the book. Hallelujah. 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 The book is it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. All right. Put your, put your books down. Lift your hands up. We're going to dedicate ourselves now. We're going to dedicate ourselves. Hallelujah. Periodically, periodically, you know, in this congregation, several times a year, I help you pray a prayer of dedication. Hallelujah. Once again, we rededicate ourselves to God. Father, today we stand in your presence and we dedicate ourselves to your word one more time. To your word. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the price that was paid for your word. The hundreds of people who were killed to get us the word. We hold this in our hands today. We hold the word in our hands. We thank you for it. The hundreds and hundreds of people. And then in the Middle East, if you were found with a Christian Bible, you were killed. You were killed. You were executed. And we thank you for the word. We thank you. And we thank you. Don't ever let us lose our desire for the word. And respect for the Lord. We praise you today. We praise you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. And now, Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen and amen.